This is Mac OS Ken. Data fun, data loss, and a plethora of Apple TV Plus stories. It is Friday, the 9th of July, 2021. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Apple's March for the Thing before the next thing continues. I download blogs as Apple on Thursday released the fifth betas for iOS 14.7 iPad OS 14.7, Mac OS 11.5, Big Sur, Watch OS 7.6, and TV OS 14.7 to developers and public beta testers. As always, these are for developer machines or test machines, not for mission critical hardware. Developers and people in the beta program can get the new round in the usual way. People not in the public tester program but who want to be can find out more at beta.apple.com. That airport time capsule that Apple stopped selling in 2018? Yeah, you may not want to rely on that at this point. Apple Insider highlights the findings of a data recovery service based in Germany. They say that they've had to do a lot of data recovery from time capsules thanks to an apparent design flaw. The problem appears to be with the parking ramp, According to Apple Insider, the parking ramp is the part of the hard disk drive that connects the drive to the external enclosure. Unfortunately, as the poorly ventilated time capsule heats up, the two materials heat at different rates, leading to eventual wear and destruction of the parking ramp. And that leads to the destruction of the disks. As the data recovery firm explains it, The damage to the parking ramp then causes the write-read unit to be destroyed and severely deformed the next time the read-write unit is parked. When the time capsule is now turned on again or wakes from hibernation, the data disks of the Seagate hard drives are destroyed because the deformed read-write unit drags onto it. The firm does mention Seagate specifically. It's the firm's belief that the fault lies not in Apple's design, but in the Seagate Granada hard drive installed in the time capsule. Still, they are part and parcel. Apple Insider says the data recovery company suggests that users that rely upon the Apple time capsule should seek a new backup solution. This is because the failure can occur at any time, and data recovery isn't always possible. What's Apple VP of Stuff and Other Stuff Eddie the Stuff Q up to? A piece from Apple 3.0 has him palling around with Tim Cook at this week's Summer Camp for Billionaires. That's the nickname some people have given to the Allen & Company conference in Sun Valley, Idaho. Wheelers and dealers, movers and shakers, big money, no plebs. Fun to be had, no doubt. After that, he may be headed to the Tar Heel State. A piece from Apple Insider says the stuff has been named to the Board of Trustees for Duke University. Apple's senior VP of Internet Software and Services has been appointed to a six-year term, according to the report. The North Carolina school is Q's alma mater. Apple Insider says it's where he received his bachelor's degree in computer science and economics. Boy, this week was not Apple's day in the UK. The company found itself in a bit of emoji trouble. Then it angered football fans. In fairness, though, the football thing wasn't Apple's fault. First stop, Emoji Town. If you type in the word stammer in the emoji search field, or type the word stammering in a regular text field, a piece from Cult of Mac says the suggestion you get back is the comical woozy face emoji. Not funny, according to STAMA, the British Stammer Association. Rather, it is demeaning and damaging, according to STAMA CEO Jane Powell. She is quoted in the piece as saying, Stammering is how some people talk. Treating it as a joke is stigmatizing. It can leave people embarrassed about how they sound, bullied and ashamed, which can affect their mental health, their careers, and relationships. Think she's overreacting? 
Well, then I'm guessing you don't stammer. That said, Cult of Mac points out, the stammer does not always refer to a speech disorder. While it always means to leave pauses or include repeated sounds with speech, this may also be due to fear or nervousness. Apple's connotation suggests nervousness, such as a person turning red seen through the flushed cheeks on the emoji, and nervously or awkwardly delivering speech. Taking it a tiny bit further, Mac Daily News points out that the woozy face emoji does not appear when typing in the word stuttering into the Messages app. The same woozy face emoji does appear when typing the words drunk, dizzy, dazed, and of course, woozy. Part of me wonders whether this is one of those regional issues, the old George Bernard Shaw quote, England and America are two countries divided by a common language. Really, though, the whole thing leaves me dazed, dizzy. wonder if there's an emoji for how I feel. On now to the football fun, or lack thereof. When I say football, by the way, I mean soccer for this story. Wednesday saw England reach the final of Euro 2020, and while many were cheering along in front of their TVs, I more says a lot of people watching on Apple TV, well, they might have been yelling, but they were not cheering. Seems they missed a good bit of the second half. Probably too many people trying to watch it, which, this far into the streaming game, really isn't that much of an excuse. According to iMore, ITV was the only way for UK viewers to enjoy the game, leaving the channel's streaming service under considerable load. Load it clearly couldn't cope with. Those watching by means other than Apple TV seemed unaffected, however. ITV apologized on Twitter, which is always helpful for a live event. Unfortunately, read the tweet, we're experiencing issues with Apple TV. Please bear with us while we fix this. Apologies for any inconvenience. News of another Apple Developer Academy. Apple Insider cites a report from the Saudi Gazette that says the company has chosen Riyadh for its first Developer Academy in the Middle East and North Africa region. Boldly going, it seems. The piece says the new facility will be dedicated to providing tools and training for aspiring female programmers, developers, and designers so that they can establish startups and create jobs in iOS app development. Additionally, the piece goes on to say, the move could also bolster support of women's empowerment and other social reforms under Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030 project. No word in the reports on when the program gets underway. We'll wrap the day with a few stories around Apple TV+. Plus. On the very serious side... Apple on Thursday announced a 9-11 documentary meant to mark the 20th anniversary of that horrendous day. Mac Rumor says 9-11, inside the president's war room, will cover the definitive timeline of the U.S. presidency in the immediate hours after the September 11, 2001 attacks. Decidedly less serious. News of a movie I'm not sure we actually knew was coming – I more says Ryan Reynolds posted a pic to Twitter this week from the set of a movie he's working on called Spirited. It's a Christmas movie, according to I more, and it is apparently for Apple TV+. The picture has Reynolds literally face-to-face -face with Will Ferrell. He captioned the pic, Day one shooting with one of my comedy idols, Will Ferrell. You barely noticed this was an Apple movie. See, if you see the picture, that's pretty funny. Reynolds is very obviously wearing a pair of AirPods Pro in the pic. Also, his Twitter message continued, iOS 14.6 will begin installing in 7 seconds. As for the movie, iMore says Spirited is a musical adaptation of the Charles Dickens classic A Christmas Carol. No release date yet, though. You gotta figure it'll be out either this Christmas or next Christmas. Hopefully this one. An anticipated Apple TV Plus documentary has had its premiere at cons this week. Though not in competition, the Todd Hayes-directed film The Velvet Underground about uh, some band, can't remember which one. Anyway, it had its big screen premiere this week. 
As far as Hayes is concerned, big screen is where it's at. Deadline had Hayes saying, As an old school filmmaker, I make movies for the big screen first and foremost. Watching it last night at the festival, hearing it, the soundtrack is so important. There's nothing like it. That will still be a priority for me in the way we release the film. While it will get a big screen release, it'll hit small screens at the same time. The film will receive a dual theatrical and digital release on the 15th of October, according to the report. Perhaps not wanting to bite the hand that feeds, producer Julie Goldman said, Yay, raw big screen, but also yay, raw Apple. We made it to be cinematic, she said, adding that Apple embraced the way the film was made. The more opportunities we have for our films to be seen, we embrace that. And finally today, somewhere between happy and sad, sits Mr. Corman. The Mac Observer says Apple TV Plus released a trailer for the Coming Soon series on Thursday, created by, written by, and starring Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Apple's description of the show says, with better luck, choices, or posture, Josh Corman could have been a rock star. Now he teaches fifth grade and struggles to find happiness and meaning in a world that sometimes feels short on both. The first two episodes will premiere on Apple TV Plus on the 6th of August, according to the Mac Observer. Between now and then, you can catch the trailer on YouTube. Mac OS Can, brought to you by me and supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.